that's the A series, and we did that because it wasn't being covered by the media. So we got it covered. <coughs> and that's our Kaposis sarcoma, which is type of skin cancer. This was in the time of poor blind aids and poor the antivirals. And so I went, I drew people um, who, most of whom uh, died. And uh, really fabulously brave people. Really taught me a lot um, about how to deal with death. Because the courage of people is just astonishing. And the people working on the wards had to volunteer because then it was months before you could get the test that were positive or negative. And they have families. So they had to assume they were positive if they got needle sick or anything. They had to assume they were positive and not be very careful around their families. So that was all volunteers on the on the uh, full blown AIDS ward. And that includes cleaners, everyone. And then they started with the needle stick, they got the drop boxes. And the sheets and the pajamas were ground up. My friend Dr. Avery, who's a genius artist too, who made paper out of the sheets and pajamas so he could print their portrait so he'd never forget a patient and they're just brilliant um so we'd go to his house after he worked and uh after he'd been on the aids ward and he'd start carving the portrait so he'd never forget them what a genius artist he is absolute genius. He was the first psychiatrist to record what HIV does to the brain. Next please. That's him. I mean that was him. Um, this was a young man I was drawing. His father came in for the first time because this young man was gay and uh, the family had denied he had uh, AIDS or that he was gay. It was really hard for us. And his father came in the first time, and I could see the horror on his face and the sadness. And I just tried to ca capture that. But it was too late. His son couldn't recognize him anymore. His son actually was tied to the bed. He's no longer mentally competent. And I was so upset, and I said to the nurse, that's, I wrote all this down, I said, his father's here. And they said, this is good. The family is dealing with this. This is positive. I mean, but he did die, he died, of course. Next, please. And this is a young woman, a young student, an art student, actually. And uh, she wants to go home to die. She's 22. I wrote down all, everything. And they're around her bed. They have a big decision to make. The doctors have to decide, and there's ethicists there, and there's Eric, the psychiatrist. They have to decide whether to follow the patient's wishes. She's mentally competent. She wants to go home. She wants to die at home. They have to follow her wishes or her family. They don't want her at home. And uh, they chose, she goes home. They followed what the patient wanted. And you think of what medical professionals go through. It's, it's phenomenal, you know, what they have to do in this such a hostile environment for them, of our healthcare system. Next, please. And that's a young man I saw die, and he put his hands up, which you do when you, you die like that, put his hands up. And he was, it looks really bad there, but it wasn't bad. His family was around him, they had balloons. Um, they were celebrating his life. Um, they um, supported him being gay. It was a very positive thing, his end in the, in the hospital. Next, please. And that's his body being taken out. And everything on that bed strip, <coughs> don't forget this is AIDS, not HIV. Everything is stripped off and put in these red garbage bags which go over to Mexico to be recycled. 